And that off over a mile and a half in the group Benny Roan Stakes. On the inside, it's Pivotal Trigger, first to show in front from Peking Opera. Valiant King close up with Vauban and then Gulu Gong, the back three are Safe Cracker, Lafayette and Sunchart. Continuing along the side of the track, and it is a pivotal trigger just showing in front. Gula Gong has improved out wide. In between horses is Vauban running the rail, Peking Opera, followed by Valiant King. Break of a couple of lengths to Safe Cracker and Lafayette racing together with the back marker, Sunchart. Turning to head right over the far point of the track, and Pivotal Trigger is joined by Gulu Gong. Break of a length to Vauban just in third place from Peking Opera. Two lengths to Valiant King. Another two lengths then to Safe Cracker and Lafayette. And bringing up the rear with less than a mile to go is Sunchart. It's Gulu Gong edging on by a half under Shami Heffern. And in second place is Pivotal Trigger, Shane Foley. And third is Vauban Colin Keane. And fourth is Peking Opera, Ryan Moore. And then Valiant King, Dylan Brown McMonigle. Safe Cracker, Ben Cohen, a place in front of Lafayette and Chris Hayes and continuing in last place. Reaching the six furlong point, the halfway stage is Sunchart and Andy Slattery. It's Gulu Gong, and running the rail, pivotal trigger, separated by Nick. In third place is Vauban, hugely impressive in a Royal Ascot staying handicapped last time. Peking Opera is fourth, and then Valiant King with five furlongs to go. Safe Crackers followed by Lafayette, and last of all is Sunchart. A little more spaced out than they were at an earlier stage. Gulu Gong on the outside of Pivotal Trigger, the white cap. Tracked for home by Vauban and Peking Opera, those two matching strides. And then Valiant King, Safe Cracker nudged along, then Lafayette in a gap of three lengths to Sunchart as they straighten up three furlongs to go. In the Ballyroan Stakes Group 3, Pivotal Trigger wrestles back a small advantage, but looming on the outside in the spots is Vauban. Gulu Gong gets reminders in between horses, looking for the split peaking opera, then Valiant King, Lafayette, and Safe Cracker, and Sun Chart, less than two furlongs to go. Vauban hits the front, being followed now by Peking Opera, Valiant King trying to get on terms, then Pivotal Trigger, who drops back on the rail, but racing to the final furlong, kicking clear with the Ballyroan as Vauban from Valiant King in third place, is Peking Opera, and inside the last 50 yards, Vauban is going to add the Ballyroan to Royal Ascot for Colin Keane, Willie Marlins, Valiant King, second Peking Opera, third. Well, Vauban lending a real touch of star quality to today's nice card. He's landed the Group 3 Ballyroan stakes for Willie Mullins, who's taking a day off from going racing. I presume today he's represented by his assistant, David Casey. He's not down in Cork, is he, or is he just watching at home? Um, I, I'm not sure, Gary, but um, he just decided not to come here today. He might, he might have gone to Cork. It's been a long week in Galway, in fairness, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Willie was up and down every day, so um, uh, it takes a bit out of you. Right. Talk to me about Vauban. Has you any worries at all whatsoever about dropping down to a mile and a half today? No, he, he won a list race a couple of years ago in France over a mile and a half, so... Um, Obviously, I think further suits him better, but um, we were hopeful and confident enough today that um, it wouldn't pose a problem. And in the race itself, did you feel it was pretty straightforward? It looked that way. Colin said it was very simple. Um, they went a nice even gallop, which suited him, and a little bit of juice in the ground, I thought, suited him well. He said he picked up in the straight, and um, he was delighted with him. I think we're all well aware at this stage what the long-term goal is for 2023. What about his routine between now and then? Do you think he might run again? Yeah, he's in a couple of those races later on, um, the end of August, early September, so um, Willie will decide what he wants to do with him whether he goes straight or he had to run kind of today to finish in the first three to take that box um, to pass the, the ballot for the Melbourne Cup. So he's done that now. So we, we'll decide in the next few weeks um, what he's going to do with him. Ryan obviously rode him to win at Ascot, David, but Collins picked up the man today. Is he maybe in pole position now if Ryan can't ride? Yeah, there's, there's a few options. There's been plenty of jockeys on looking for the ride. Um, but obviously we'll, we'll see what weight and stuff he gets first in the Melbourne Cup and decide then. But I think... Um, Ryan, Ryan was keen, I think, um, after Ascot, that if he had enough weight and commitments allowed, that he, he, he'd go and ride him. OK, well, watch this space. You're a veteran of these Melbourne Cup trips at this stage. Just remind me who you've been down there with. Yeah, I've been to a few. Um, obviously, Max Dynamite a couple of times and Thomas Hobson. And uh, True Self went down. She won under a couple of years as well, twice, actually. She won the Queen Elizabeth. She, didn't, she actually got balloted by one both times for the, for the Melbourne Cup, but won the Queen Elizabeth, so it just shows you. But um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a super race meeting. It's a brilliant carnival and um, definitely one everybody should have on the bucket list. Max Dynamite in particular went very close. Do you think this, this horse represents a better chance, maybe? 
Yeah, well, he's definitely a better hurdler probably than Max Dynamite was. Um, Max was a Group Two winning flat horse as well, you know. So um, might be much between him on, on flat ratings, but um, hopefully he goes there with a good chance. I, 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 a lot will depend on the opposition, but um, it looks like there's more internationals going down this year than there was last year. So it might be a bit more of an open contest. But um, if we can get him there in one piece, yeah, I'd be delighted that he could be competitive. Exciting times. You mentioned hurdles there, which I'm sure he'll return to at some stage. Do you think? Maybe it might be something you'd explore to look at going a bit further over hurdles, or is he an out-and-out too modern? That? No, he, he probably could. Uh, we, we'd always maintain that Triumph Hurdle winners, especially um, if they win a Triumph Hurdle as a four-year-old, obviously, that in time they, they would get further, you know, so um, it definitely would be an option for him. He's just the sort of dual-purpose horse I think people would kill for almost at the moment. Right? Yeah, he's a superstar in fairness to him now, you know. He, he, he's, he's good at both touch woods, and uh, hopefully he'll continue that way. And David, you mentioned Galway there. Did you enjoy the week as a whole? It, Ended as it started with a winner for the camp. Ten winners on the week. It's not a bad return. Is it? No, it was, it was good. They all ran well. Thanks be to God. Um, it was great to get a few winners. You know, it's um, it's a super meeting down there, obviously, and um, the weather held up for the most part, which was good for, um, for the for the fans going there. So um, yeah, no, delighted with the week. Derek the brave in the hurdle, the highlight, I suppose. But to me, of all the horses you ran there, the most exciting was the very first one, Mystical Power. How high? you hold him in terms of regard? Yeah, it's hard to know because he doesn't show at home what, what, what he's shown on the track, uh, especially um, it looked like he'd improved loads last week in Galway and hopefully if he can improve again, um, as his mother did through, through the season, you know that um, yeah, we just we live in hope that he can go places, yeah. yeah. One to look forward to, no question. Great day today, well done over the week and thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Gary. Cheers, thanks. Subscribe to Racing TV's YouTube channel now to watch more great races like this.